being gone Is I can watch the game all day long And I can stretch my legs out in the bed Extra pillow underneath my head I Don't know why nobody ever told me About the upside of lonely I got a lot more room for my stuff And I only have to wash one cup I can stay up late and play my guitar And the groceries go twice as far I don't know why nobody ever told me About the upside lonely Your girlfriends ain't ringing the phone off the wall I never have to hear from that mother-in-law Ain't cut the grass since the middle of June I smoke a big cigar up in my living room Don't know why nobody ever told me About the upside lonely Trash pile up right by the door Eat pizza and ice cream three times a day Cause I ain't worried about watching my way I don't know why nobody ever told me About the upside of lonely Yeah man, just think about all the good things about you being gone Stretch out out here at home. Hey man, come on in. Don't mind the muddy shoes on the white carpet. She ain't here. You hungry? Hey man, I got some food if you want to eat. I got a microwave oven with little pictures on the front of it. You just pick what you want to eat and push the button, and it will cook it for you. Yeah, man, you can smoke that cigar up here in the kitchen. Just use that vase over there. You need something to drink? We got beer, bourbon, whiskey, scotch, Diet Coke, Fanta. Yeah, man, I bet you've been on the road for a minute. The bathroom's right down the hall. Switches on the left, doors on the right. Just remember to leave the lid up. Leave it up. Welcome, everybody, to Wednesday Night Live here on Facebook in lovely Rancho Mirage, California. I'm your host, Brian Nova. And uh, you can't really see him here, but my co-host, Ellington, is back here. He is just checking out Dad and seeing what's going on. Tonight's a very special show, especially for myself, because uh, we're going to take into the life, look into the life of the great Herb Ellis. 
Uh, my mentor, one of my great inspirations, and inevitably uh, a dear friend, and, uh, and uh, he's kind of got Joe me the ropes, took me on the road with him. So we're going to delve into a little bit more about Herbie Ellis in a little bit. But I'm going to start off with... <laughs> It's very clear Our love is here to stay Not for a year But ever and a day The radio and The telephone and The movies that we know May just be Paths and fancies, and in time may go. But oh, my dear, our love is here to stay. Together, we're going a long, long way. In time, the Rockies may crumble. Gibraltar may tumble, they're only made of clay, but our love is here to stay. Our 
love yeah, is here to stay. And that's a true story, folks, I have to tell you. Anyway, a wonderful song by the Gleishvins called Our Love is Here to Stay. I uh, hope everybody's doing well out there today in Facebook Live Land. Let's see who we got here. Oh, we got Naboisha. Hey, good to see you guys. Morgana, I'm sure. Bob Sky. John Connors. Good to see you, John. Hang in there at Vertigo Club. Yeah, yeah. And of course, Annie Marge is there. Ah, Herb Ellis and Brian Nova. Actually, Annie Marge got to meet. It's, or not meet, but got to see me play with Herbie a couple times I'm over the years, that's for sure. Um, I'm going to do a tune that uh, Herbie used to play all the time. And some of you out there that know me have probably heard me do this. Uh, it is a, uh, it's sort of another ode to the Gershwins. It's called, uh, it's the Flintstones. But the tune is really based on the chord changes of I Got Rhythm, or what we call jazz rhythm changes. So it's sort of like instead of, you know, be the same as, uh, same chord changes. So anyway, uh, we are going to, I'm going to play a little rhythm changes for you in the key of Herb's favorite B flat.
whatever that was. There it was, folks. Uh, that was uh, a version of, um, of course, Gershwin's Rhythm Changes, but better known to most of you, the group in the 60s and 70s, as I did, as the Flintstones theme. Wilma, there you go. Hey, uh, what else we got out here? We got Dr. Aaron Lincoln. Yes, Nova is my last name. Thanks for pronouncing it and spelling it correctly, Aaron. I appreciate that. Uh, Lonnie Buckley out there. Brett May sending all sorts of, uh, I don't know what that is, sort of some crazy text. But uh, yabba dabba do to you too, Brett. And I saw, I think above there earlier, by a pal of mine, Paul, P is that, was that Paul? It is Paul Paget, Paget, Piggott. Paul, how are you, man? Uh, he is from, uh, I met Paul, I don't know, 25 years ago. Great guitar player from uh, uh, British Columbia. Uh, I met him in Victoria many years, over the years. And uh, I think he resides in Vancouver. Anyway, thanks for tuning in up there in BC. Tonight, uh, we are talking about two things in particular. One, of course, our cigars. And our cigar of choice today is our AVO 2020 Improvisation, which of course, for me, what else is there? We're going to light that one up in a little bit. I can assure you of that. Uh, and secondly, today is my ode to one of my heroes and mentors and dear, dear friends, uh, the great Herb Ellis. So uh, I'm going to start with a little video that we've kind of put together um, with some pictures that I've had over the years and, uh, and of course, some shots out there of Herbie when... Uh, he was doing stuff way before, so uh, why don't we try to roll that one there, honey? All right, Herbie was born in 1921. He first heard the electric guitar when he first played with George, heard George Barnes on a radio station. As a teenager living outside of Dallas, Texas, he heard that and thought, I have to learn how to play like that. He went to North Texas State, Ellis, Ellis majored in music, but because they didn't have a guitar program, he started the string bass. After that, he met Jimmy Guffrey and, edit, and heard Charlie Christian for the first time. Two events that started him playing in jazz. Herbie was born in Farmersville, Texas and raised outside of Dallas. He joined a band in 43 called the Glenn Gray and Casa Loma Orchestra. It was Gray's band that got him first recognition in jazz magazines. He also became proficient at North Texas State University. After that, he left that for Jimmy Dorsey. Let me just stop it for a second here. If we can, I guess we can. I'm sorry, we outran ourselves there. Uh, we're going to start that over again, and, uh, and I'll catch up with it. So uh, take another shot there from where we're at, honey.
it's kind of, it was really fun to go back through some of those, old, those, those great pictures there. Uh, one, one part of the story I forgot to mention, and I didn't have the time to make a picture of this, but I got it off my wall. Uh, Gary Larson, who's a mutual friend, was, uh, wanted to always said he played how to play jazz guitar. And Gary took time off, and in lieu of, um, I don't know if you can see that, in lieu of uh, lessons, or you know, uh, prices for lessons, uh, uh, Herbie uh, and Red Mitchell, uh, did a record together called Dog and Around, and this is the album cover from that one on Concord Records. And of course, I got my buddy Herbie to sign it for for me. But um, it's really cute. Herbie, of course, is the white dog, and and Red is the red dog, and uh, it's a bunch of dogs in a club called the Stuffed Cat. How apropos. Anyway, yeah, this was a great album cover that um, her. Uh, it's actually one of the uh, ideas that I got when I thought about our latest CD. Maybe we can show a man album cover uh, where we um, got my buddy Mark Ulrichson to do a great cover. Uh, our biggest problem actually with that cover was how do we get eight people on one, uh, on one page without making it look like a lineup. I hate it when bands just kind of line up in a row. So uh, that was one of the ways. So uh, we... Uh, I was digging through all my stuff and I found my old Herbie Ellis uh, music book that uh, Herbie and I put together with all his different tunes and charts. And I thought, well, what fun. Why don't I get the trio out and we'll do a couple of Her Herbie songs. So uh, the first song that Herb would play every night uh, is a beautiful tune called The More I See You. And uh, here's a video that we just recorded with... Uh, Yours truly, of course, on the guitar. Uh, Terry Miller on the bass and Andy Fragger Jr. on the drums. Check it out. Here we go, boys. Three, four. <laughs>
How about that, folks? Uh, the more I see you, and of course that was Terry Miller uh, with that uh, rousing bass solo. Well done, Terry. Well done. Uh, Bob Sky, who is the cover artist? Well, that cover artist for this CD is none other than the great Gary Larson from the Far Side uh, Comics. Uh, Gary lived in um, uh, in Seattle, and then um, uh, that was. Um, and that's who did Herbie's. And the artist, of course, on our CD album was the great Mark Ulrichson, and uh, who does uh, a lot of the covers for the um, New Yorker. So uh, it's very cool. Mark, you're very cool, Mark. Love you, man. All right. Uh, we're going to need another. I got, a, I got a funny story, actually, about Herbie. I've got some ton of funny stories over the years about Herbie. But um, I remember one. It, it had to do with... Um, the Jimmy Dorsey band. So uh, before Herbie had tried out for the Dorsey band, he had um, kind of went through all the records and had listened to all the guitar stuff. And Herbie had um, memorized the guitar parts. Because Herbie uh, didn't read, especially big band charts, or they go by pretty quick. So he didn't read that well. So he shows up to the rehearsal. It's actually more of a... Of a uh, try out for her and luckily uh, Jimmy Dorsey picks two tunes that 
that Herbie had already memorized. So he played it through, acted like he was reading it, but played him flawlessly. And after the rehearsal, Jimmy Dorsey jumps up and goes, oh my God, this guitar player can read anything. Uh, get my writers, get my everybody, I got my arrangers out here, uh, get my copyists. I want a half, I want six tunes by tomorrow with, with him featured in our front stuff. And of course now Herbie's panicking. So the next day they show up to rehearsal and uh, the church start to go out in the stands. And Herbie and who else was in the band was Stan Getz. Herbie and Stan sneak away for a few minutes and they go to the men's room basically inside the studios. And Stan reads or plays the part and Herbie tried to memorize them as he went uh, 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 Herbie couldn't memorize them fast enough. So um, they eventually Herbie had to come out and tell Jimmy Dorsey that uh, he actually wasn't this power reader from, you know, Texas that uh, could read anything. And of course, uh, he just told him, I just wanted the gig. I really wanted to play and I really wanted to like impress you. And so um, how could Jimmy Dorsey say, but all right, true on the band, kid. Let's get back to business as usual. And uh, Herbie spent several years with them until he moved on to the Southwinds. Uh, we're gonna do another tune here that uh, uh, Terry and Andy helped me put together. Uh, as I was perusing through our old book together, uh, I realized there's a very fun tune that Herbie would play every night. And uh, the only other version I really ever heard of this tune, other than maybe in gospel music, uh, was Pete Seeger singing it. Um, anyway, it's called John Brown's Body. I'm sure you'll recognize it. And, um, Go oh, something like this. Check it out. Here we go. Three, four. <laughs> Thank you. 
There you go, John Brown's body. Uh, it was fun to play that, actually. I haven't played that in a long time since I played that with her maybe uh, almost 30, 20 years ago. Uh, I was thinking of some other funny stories with Herb. Uh, I remember when uh, Herbie and uh, Joe decided to do some records together. And, uh, you know, for Herb, he kind of thought of it as just a, a duet and not understanding how competitive Joe Pass was, that it was going to be more of a duel. And uh, one night they were, they were playing... Uh, at, a, at a jazz club that used to be on the corner of Hollywood and Vine down in L.A. called the Vine Street. And uh, they came out of there on one of their breaks, and Joe was furious. Joe was really hot. And uh, it really stemmed from the fact that when, uh, when Herbie would take a solo, Joe would walk a bass line and chord, and so it would sound very full. But when Herbie would, take a, uh, would, would comp, and, and Joe would take a, a solo. Uh, Herbie just kind of did this little Freddie Green thing. So it never felt the same to Joe. And Joe couldn't just really like get his fire lit, I guess, is the best way to put it. So uh, he, uh, he stormed off the stage and went outside, lit a cigar up, and Herbie kind of came out after him. And he goes, you know, hey, Joe, what's the matter? And Joe's like, I can't play like this. I can't play like this. Da -da 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 -da. And Herbie looked at him and says, well, Joe, I know you were good, but I didn't know you were that good. Classic line from Herbie Ellis. <laughs> anyway, uh, here is another tune that uh, uh, we're, we're going to feature for you here. Uh, a song that I played almost every night with Herbie Ellis was uh, the great tune called Just Friends. In fact, I learned it on the stage while I was playing with Herb. And of course, I got the chance to play with a lot of other great artists over the years. Uh, but um, on this particular version, uh, I'm trying to play, in fact, all these three songs, I'm trying to play them as Herbie-esque as I can. Uh, I don't have a 175 and I don't have a polytone amp, so the sound is not going to be anywhere near the same, nor the feel, but um, we're giving it our best shot. On this particular video, uh, I'm also playing the comp because uh, I've always felt, I'm sure there's a lot of guitar players out there that feel the same way, that one of Herb's greatest strengths was his ability, his ability to, to accompany people, what we call comping in jazz. Uh, he had amazing time. His time, uh, as far as a metronome timekeeper, was far none the best. And his ability to play and comp and make everybody else around him feel very comfortable while he was comping, um, sometimes a Freddie Green style, sometimes more of a Wes Montgomery style, and then many times just his own style. In fact, he used to do this uh, where he'd tap the, uh, the guitar and make it sound sort of like a, a set of bongos. Which I do a little bit of on the video. So anyway, that is me on the other side of me uh, comping. I'm trying to do my Herb Ellis comp while I'm trying to play uh, just friends in the Herb Ellis way. So give it a listen.
just friends. And uh, yes, Dennis, Dr. Dennis, we are much more than just friends. Just so you know, we're clear about that. Hey, I'm so happy to see so many people joining us. Rob Dellinger, good to see you, brother Rob. And of course, Dr. Eric's with us tonight. My little brother David's here, good to see you, Dave. And brother James is with us as well. And um, we've got all sorts of other people. Hey, look at there, Matt Mebblem. Good to see you, Matt. We want to thank you guys for all tuning into this stuff. It's uh, great fun to do this each week. Kind of keeps us alive and keeps us, uh, uh, gives us a chance to do some some fun videos. I was thinking a couple of other Herbie stories. I remember one time uh, Herbie and I were in, um, we were actually, I was thinking about this when I saw Paul's uh, from Vancouver and Victoria's uh, email or text. Through. Herbie and I, uh, we were going to play one night at Herman's Jazz Club, I believe it was, in uh, Victoria. And then we we're going to run across and play at another jazz club that was in downtown Vancouver, uh, on West Vancouver. It was an Italian restaurant there. It'll come to me the name of it here in a second. And a uh, very popular jazz club. And so when uh, and we had played in Seattle the night before, so we drove up. Uh, I drove up. And uh, we got to the to border, and Herbie's like, Brown, I, I don't know, maybe we should stop. I've, I've got some papers I should probably sign. And I said, uh, well, Herbie, I said, you know, we're only here for a couple nights. You really think we have to? And he goes, no, 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 let's go through. Let's go through. So, of course, we just drove through, you know, told him we were there visiting. And caught the ferry, went over to Victoria. We played in uh, Victoria, did two shows that night. The next morning, 9 a.m., we get a knock on the door. And it is customs, immigrations at the door telling us that we're being deported as of immediately. We're supposed to get on the 10 a.m. ferry. And uh, we explained to them that oh, well, we had the paperwork. We just didn't stop to get it. And they were like, well, if you want to keep staying, ever come back here, you better go sign that paperwork. So we had packed immediately, left like crazy, drove, took the ferry boat back across. You have to go from... Uh, basically, uh, well, you go over to Sawasan and you're leaving from Nanaimo on Vancouver Island. Took the ferry boat across, drove all the way down to the border, had to get through the Canadian border, get back around American border, and get back in line, got back up to the Canadian border, and then signed our papers, went indoors, signed our papers. Of course, they weren't too happy that we had missed a day already. But they let us go and then uh, drove in up into Vancouver. And the show started at 8, and I think Herbie and I pulled up to the curb at 7.58. So it started a little late, but uh, it's just another day in the life of On the Road with Herbie Ellis. It was a lot of fun, though. I did dig up a little record here, and um, I've got a video of Herbie uh, playing some blues, just solo guitar himself. Uh, but it'll give you a chance to see her be, uh, I, it certainly brought some tears to my eyes when I got to see, see him play once again. So, uh, uh, give a listen. It's a quick little three minute, uh, Herbie doing a, basically a clinic on how you play the blues and jazz. Check it out.
Yeah, so great to see Herbie playing. Um, listen, a uh, few things before we uh, sign off here. First off, YouTube. We're going to be going to YouTube here very, very soon. We're still working on all this thing, folks. We're not the quickest technology group here. At least I'm not the quickest technology group here. Also, make sure you check out over here uh, for our uh, PayPal. Because uh, we never expect it, but we always appreciate any help we can get. So uh, paypal.me slash Brian Nova Music is the place to check it out. Also, hey, hey, where are you going, pal? What's a, this is his good side over here. All right. So um, also, I uh, want to say hi out to, of course, all our pals out there up in Seattle. Vertigo Room, and uh, I see uh, Santa Claus over there. Uh, Ron, so glad you guys are up at the Vertigo Club tonight. I mean, I'm sorry, the Churchill Room tonight. Uh, and we hope to see you when we get up there soon. Also, I want to give a big thank out to uh, Leon Beckin and the Rancho Mirage recording people who helped us uh, record some of our stuff this week. Uh, and uh, thank you guys so much. We really appreciate it. And of course, a big, big, big thank out to the lovely Masoni. Thank mom uh, for putting on the show and helping us with everything here. And uh, we want to remind everybody that next week I've got a very special guest. I've got the one and only Mike Varney, a guitarist extraordinaire and uh, owner and creator of Shrapnel Records. Uh, I thought with the, um, the passing of Eddie Van Halen this last week that maybe we could look into some guitar stuff. Uh, of a more modern rock and roll era. And of course, I don't know anybody better at that than Mike Varney. He's the one that got artists like Ving V. Malstein, Stevie Vai, and Joe Satriani their starts. So uh, we're going to have Mike on next week, and he's an incredible blues guitar player. And uh, we'll be doing some videos with him as well. So anyway, uh, and a big thank out, thank out, big thank you to uh, Teddy Nila. Uh, Mr. Terry Miller, and of course, Andy Franco Jr. for helping us out, as they always do. We so appreciate you guys. Uh, don't forget about Larry Dunlap's Cave at 7 o'clock. And, uh, and please, please, please help share our show and help uh, get us more subscriptions on YouTube. Just takes a click, folks. Just go over to my YouTube channel at Brian, K. Nova, Brian Nova Music and uh, give us a subscription, subscribe, click. And uh, that's all the commercials I have. I hope you guys have a great week. Remember when you're out there, it's still lockdown time, so it's tough. But I hope you guys will um, be kind to each other. Be gentle when you're out there. Uh, if you see some idiots out there on the road, don't join in. Let them just stay idiots on their own. And uh, remember, how bad it gets, no matter how rough it looks, uh, or no matter how bad people drive, remember just to always keep it swinging. All right, pups, keep it swinging.